We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. It's a beautiful day here in South Carolina. Not too hot, not too cold, fairly warm. Yes. It's warm. Fairly warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got college starting up here in a few days, so we're trying to rush around and get as much stuff done as we can. But we do have one project in particular that's going to be important as we go into summer. Come take a look. The back door, which goes to the kitchen, really needs a new screen. Take a look at this. I don't care how big that bug is, it can get in. <laughs> so let's see if we can get that fixed. This old aluminum screen door is as ugly as can be for a Victorian house. I would love to build a nice new wooden door, and we will do that at some point in the future, but right now we need to make a repair so we can keep moving forward. This old screen door here is kind of an antique in its own right. It was probably installed back in the early 1960s from the looks of things. It would probably be really nice on an old 60s house. But for now, let's see if we can get this apart. So I have four screws that appear to be holding this screen in here. So I'll take those out. Now this should just come right out. I say should, but maybe it doesn't. Aha. So we have one more screw up here that needs to come off. There we go. Here we are five minutes later. Did I ever mention that here in the Deep South, the weather can be very unpredictable? We just had a massive thunderstorm roll through here. I mean, literally, I left the house to go get some gasket, and boom, there was a thunderstorm. And as you can see, I got a little soaked in the process. But let's go back inside and continue where we left off. This screen is made of fiberglass. Somebody thought that was a really great idea back in the day. Ooh, fiberglass. Well, here's what happens to fiberglass after a few years. The original screens from the old days, they were made of steel and they were great, but sometimes they would rust out if you're in a really damp climate or especially a coastal climate. And then there is the aluminum screen, which neither rusts nor falls apart. Let's go ahead and take this out. I'm just going to take this rubber gasket here and pry it up gently. So I'm just going to very carefully just roll this out of here and see what's left over. Well, so far it's holding up and it hasn't broken. But it does feel stiff and dry. So let's take this window screen off the frame. It's been on here for a long time and it seems to be coming off very nicely. So I've got this replacement cord here. What I did is I measured the old cord and then I found the cord that's the exact same size and shape. They actually make this for that specific purpose. Every hardware store in America carries this and it's not expensive. The other thing you need is a tool and that tool will help you press it down in place. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But first, let's get this thing cleaned out. Out with the old. These are the tools of the trade. A pair of scissors that you don't care about, a sharp utility knife, a cord installation tool, and the cord itself. They actually call this spline, so if you go into your hardware store and ask for it, it's called a spline. I'd like to demonstrate how easy it is to cut this. Now this screen is made of aluminum, and these scissors are probably not the sharpest in the house. But look how easy it cuts right through that. I'm just taking off the excess. This is a special tool that's made just for this purpose. One end has a wheel like a pizza cutter, except it's not sharp, but it's rounded. 
The other end has a wheel that has a, a groove in it like you would have on a pulley. If you're tempted to do this with a putty knife, more power to you, but this tool doesn't cost very much. And if you want a really good result, you probably want to get the right tool. It's like $6. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to take the cord, which is correctly called the spline. And using this, I'm just going to start pushing it in place. It takes a little effort to get the thing started. And you kind of have to play a balancing act here, making sure that you're pushing down on the top of it without falling off the edge. And that's where it gets tricky. I'm sure a professional could probably do this in a matter of seconds, but I'm not a professional screen installer, so we'll just work with it. There we go. That's better. So as I push the spline into place, and I'm not pushing it all the way down yet, I'm just pushing it down in a little bit to get it started. As I'm doing this, it's drawing the screen down into the channel. I'm keeping the spline tight as I go. back over it a couple of times just to make sure it's in there all the way. It's a lot like cutting a pizza, people. Just like that. What I'm going to do next is put some clamps on here because I want to make sure that this doesn't move. And I want to be able to pull a little bit of tension. So I'll just go ahead and clamp that here. And clamp this here. So that's going to hold everything nice and snug. Now, the next thing I want to do is put some tension on it. It doesn't take a lot, but just some. And I think I'm going to put a heavy object right here just to hold this down. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the corner and keep pressing it in. this thing is not sharp. And now my trusty assistant will be here to pull down a little bit of tension on that. Okay, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and spin this around one more time. We're keeping a bit of loose tension as we go, but when we push the cord down the rest of the way, it should tighten everything up nice. this happen? Yeah, no. <laughs> There's a rule about cords, power cords, any cords. That will happen, I guarantee you. Someday I'll demonstrate the proper way to wind a power cord so that, that doesn't happen. Now let's take the other edge of the tool that's shaped like a pulley, and I'm going to press that down in really good. Press it down as far in as I can get it. And it's 
going to be again like cutting a pizza just back and forth back and forth and what this is doing is it's really bedding that down in there but it's also tightening the screen up too I can hear it crunching, making all kinds of weird noises as I do that. But I can also feel it tensing up a little bit, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and slip this down a little bit so I have something to push against. Now you'll notice that I'm not putting anything in the middle here because I don't wanna stretch it. Okay, all the way up into the corner. I wanna make sure that we get all of that down this too. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around. Actually, I don't need to because I'm still on the table. So let's go ahead and continue on around the corner. I'll keep doing the old pizza roll thing. To the corner again. Make sure it gets down in there because if it's not, then it'll pop out. We're at the point now where we really don't need the clamps anymore because it's holding itself tight. Gotta be sure that I get these corners. They've gotta be down in there real good or else they'll pop out. So we'll go ahead and just roll this side. I believe this is the last one. Now, I'm gonna come down here with a screwdriver and just kind of push that corner in manually. Just make sure it gets down in there all the way and stays in. We don't want this thing coming out. Just like I suspected, we have a nice tight screen. So now what we need to do is cut the excess. How do we cut the excess off? A sharp utility knife right down in here at a low angle pressed up against the frame. Just pull it, hear it clicking. Those are the fibers breaking. Now make sure that you keep your body back away because if that thing slips, you don't want it getting into you. You may have to go back and uh, just trim a little bit extra. Maybe, maybe a part the knife didn't quite get. done here. I just have a couple of stragglers. And that, my friends, is how you replace a screen. That is so wonderful. No more bugs in the kitchen. <laughs> no more bugs. They could literally just fly right through the hole that was there or come along the side. They were. Ugh. Yeah, so that wasn't a bad job. I think if you practiced a couple times, it would probably take maybe 10 minutes to do the whole thing. Yeah, and so worth it. Oh, we can get fresh air coming in again. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If any of you guys try this, let us know how it turns out. Yeah. Last month I found a piece of maple in my wood pile. 
And I realized we've been carting this thing around for the last few years and even brought it down from New York. And it's really never done anything. So I thought we need to do something with this. So I ran it through the wood shop and made Jeannie a nice maple cutting board. And it's ready to go, except that it needs a wood finish on it. We'll probably use tongue oil. And I think that turned out pretty well. I love it. It's beautiful and it's small and compact. I can use it for all kinds of things. Yeah. So there's all kinds of things you can do in a wood shop. Everything from the mundane cutting board all the way up to some really spectacular stuff. So my question to you guys as the viewers of this channel, would you like to see more woodworking projects along the way as we restore things here at the house? Let us know in the comments. Hello everyone. Okay, my gardener go-to guy, <laughs> He was a little preoccupied, so he pointed out a few things and I grabbed what I could, what I liked, I thought. Um, so I didn't get a whole lot of details from him. And one of our viewers has mentioned that these lantanias spread really bad and don't plant them in the garden. So I'm gonna put these in a pot. But I'm wondering, is there any others here that I should not put in the garden bed here? So right here I have the pincushion flowers. Right here I have verbena, violet blues and whites. Over here I have uptick yellow and red tick seed. Salute embers sneeze weed. Asters. Lemon ball. Hardy ice plant. This one is Superbina, peachy keen. <laughs> okay, these are Lobelias. Lobelia. This is Meadow Sage, lyrical rose. This is Powell Wildberry Coneflower. What are these? These are Torinia. These are Helopsis Burning Hearts. These ones are Cheyenne Spirit. These are Blanket Flower Arizona Sun. This one is Fireworks Golden Rod. We've got snow cap Shasta Daisy, Wendy's Wish, Millennium Ornamental Onion, and more of the Taurinia. So these are all the ones we have. These I'm thinking I'll put on the back porch and put them kind of hanging over the railing but the rest I'm not sure if it would be safe to put in the garden bed or not. Please give us a heads up, let us know. If you've been watching us long enough, you'll know that sometimes projects just come to us and we don't come to them. <laughs> and this is another one of those things that's happened to us. <laughs> um, well, maybe with a little bit of intervention from Jeannie here. Yes. So she's always been very artistic, and this goes way back as far as I've known her. She's been able to just make incredible pencil drawings. And Thank recently you. she decided to get back into it, and that kind of led to another revelation, if you will. <laughs> yes, a new venue, so to speak. I haven't tried it before, and I think it would be a lot of fun. I also thought it would be a lot of fun and good for Mike to join me in this as it's relaxing. And what exactly is this? This is, instead of just drawing things, I wanted to color them, but not just with any color. I want oil paints. I think that would be a lot of fun. So we decided, okay, it took a little bit of nudging and convincing to get him to do this too. <laughs> but I think it would help him out a lot with schoolwork, being able to just detach from that and do something totally relaxing. He doesn't have to think on it, just mix a few colors and put it on there and just relax. 
Now I've got to say, the extent of my skill in this area is paint by number sets I did as a kid. That's it. <laughs> That's all I know how to do, and I'm not even sure I know how to do that. Well, I haven't even done that, so. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> so we're kind of on the same playing field here. We are. We decided we would start with oil paint by numbers. Only they don't sell them that way anymore. They're all acrylic. Well, I didn't want acrylic because acrylic dries just too fast. I want to be able to work with it a little bit, play with the colors, and not have it dry so fast on me. And I don't want to rush through the painting. It's an art form. It's supposed to be a passion and bring out your joys and hopefully more passion about what you're painting. So how do you get around that problem? You want oil paint by number, but they don't sell them anymore because they're not safe for children. So, what'd you do? I bought the oil paints anyway, and I bought the acrylic paint by numbers. I will put them aside and we will work with the oil paints and we'll have to mix our own colors. So, that'll be interesting and fun. Yeah. Be well, a learning experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then she wants to take it to a whole new level, which is uh, to be able to, you know, be the proper artist, you've got to have the proper tools. Yes. So I started looking at the easels. Yeah, those are pretty spendy, huh? Well over $100 for each one, because I wanted it off of the, f I want to stand it on the floor. So she comes to me with this whole easel idea, and I'm looking at the price of the ones you can buy, and I thought, well, <laughs> it's just wood, right? We can build that and probably build it cheaper. And so that's exactly what we're setting out to do. We have the lumber. We went to our local sawmill. We got the lumber from them. She did the design. I told her she had to design it completely from start to finish. And I needed cut lists and I needed diagrams and schematics and everything like that. She did it. So I did. She did it. <laughs> Why don't you show me what you got there? Okay. Here is the easel. This is the side view. And this is the front view. And then here are the cut list, the fitted list, and what each board looks like. So we will do this times two. We're making two of these things. Yes. So we have all the materials, we have the plan, and next week when we meet again, we're going to actually start cutting lumber and put this thing together. Yay! Yeah, a little bit of a woodworking project. Now the ones I was looking at was priced a little over $100. Those were basic cheap ones. And these two, after buying all of the hardware we wanted, making it exactly how we really wanted for long term, getting the wood, everything was less than $100. That's pretty awesome. And that's for two easels. That's for not two. Not just one. <laughs> yes. So we saved a bunch of extra money there. Oh yeah. So that's the power of do-it-yourself woodworking. So next time we see you, we'll be putting those together. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. Like, share, and subscribe. See you next week.